So, hi, uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, yeah, my name is Roberto Raggi, I'm Italian. Um, so the title of this presentation is, uh, well, it's very long, Qt, Visual Studio.net, KDevelop, Eclipse. But it's actually about the uh, designer <laughs> and how we integrate the designer into these tools and what we want to do and, uh, you know, our roadmap for the future. So a bit about me, I'm a software engineer at Trolltech and I'm working on tools, essentially. So designer, USC, USC3, and essentially all the stuff you find in the tools directory. It's, uh, I, well, it's, it's my kind of, yeah, it's mine. And I'm also a KDE developer. Uh, it's four or five years now. And uh, before, I, I, I was working on KDE 3, and I wrote most of the programming language framework and the project manager and uh, the general architecture uh, of KDevelop 3. Um, now uh, I start KDevelop 4 with, uh, with the team, and I'm the maintainer of KDevelop 4. Um, so, so one of the one of my goal is to integrate the designer to really create a deep integration of the designer in, in, into KDevelop, but as open source developer. But Trolltech, so so Qt Designer 4. Well, I like to think that Qt Designer 4 is a, a modern and very extensible uh, GUI builder. So we start a bit with uh, Designer 4 in general, all, all the features we introduced and what we changed. Uh, the first thing is the user interface. In uh, the first beta, we released a completely new designer with a new user interface. Uh, we call this new user interface uh, multi, multi window mode. And essentially, all the windows are, are top level window. So, so uh, the property editor is a, is a window, and the widget box uh, is another window, and your forms, the, the other window. Uh, this works pretty well on OS X and Unix. Uh, if you have a good window manager, uh, you can really use this mode and save a lot of space. But um, we had problem with uh, Windows developers. I mean, the, the Windows, I mean, the window manager in Windows is not that advanced, um, and people in Windows they use to this uh, what we call workbench mode. Uh, so Windows inside Windows. Uh, if you know Qt. Uh, it's essentially the Q workspace, so you have uh, the ability to have sub windows, sub top level windows inside an existing window. So we, we added this, the, this mode that is actually the same mode we used before in QDesigner 3 after the, the first beta. And this is because people in uh, the feedback mailing list they, they asked for this feature. So, so, so uh, as you can see, if you have a problem with the designer or other components in, in Qt, just Send us an email or uh, let us know because uh, we really you know, try to you know, do the best and, uh, and change things if we, if we understand that it's wrong. Um, we also I improved the um, uh, developer experience. So we tried to use drag and drop for everything and we improved the layout manipulation. And we had a tool that uh, what you can see visually signals a lot connection or body connections or uh, things like that. Um, so we improved the user interface. Uh, so as I said before, we try to uh, push this drag and drop, and we use it extensively in, uh, in designer. So for instance, the very moment you start to drag a widget from the widget box, uh, the widget box is uh, the new name for the toolbox, if you, if you know designer 3. So in, uh, in, in designer 3, uh, if you want to create a widget, uh, the things you have to do is to click or to select the widget in the, the toolbox and then click um, in the form, in the actual form. Uh, in Designer 4, we, we decided to use drag and drop. So you have to click on, uh, on the widget box and drag the widget in, into your form. Um, this is, I think this is very nice. And we, we have a, a, nice, uh, a nice visual effect. So essentially, in real time, we show a preview of, um, of the widget. So you have an idea of the size of the widget you know, while dragging the widget. And uh, the big problem that people, they had, is that in Qt3, uh, the toolbox has a state. So if you double click on an item into the toolbox, then you can create multiple items in, uh, in, in the form. So for instance, you double click on the push button uh, in the toolbox, and then you can click three times in the form and create three widgets. People say, okay, now with this drag and drop, yeah, okay, it looks good, but I can't, I, I can't do it anymore. I have to drag three widgets. 
Well, it's not true because uh, we, we improved the drag and, drop, drag and drop in general. So we introduced a new concept like the cloning. With control drag, you can clone an existing widget, a widget that is in the form. And you will clone the widget with all the properties, which is very useful. And you can select multiple widgets and clone all these widgets together in one shot. Um, we also improved the layout manipulation. Um, well, we, we, in QD3, we had really good layout support in Sana. I think it was the best layout support available. Um, the idea is that you select a widget, and then you create a layout for this widget. So you do it from the bottom. You already have the widget in your form. And uh, this works pretty well. Uh, a layout, if you don't know what it is, is just a way to say, oh, this widget, they will grow together, or they will move together, and, and you can specify you know, the way they move or reside. Um, this works pretty well, but uh, the big problem we had in, uh, in 3 is that if you want to add a new widget into an existing layout, then you're forced to break the layout, add your widget, and recreate the layout. Now, actually, uh, this is okay if you have a, a vertical box or a, an horizontal box layout, so only one dimensional layout. But if you have a context layout, for instance, a grid, where uh, a widget, for instance, can be, well, can occupy more than one cell, or, um, you know, or a, a dialogue with this grid and a lot of widgets inside. Well, in this case, you really don't want to break if you want to add a new widget. So, so in, uh, in Qt4, we added this new functionality. So, uh, so you essentially, you can drop a widget inside an existing layout. And, and we draw what we call hints, that are these uh, blue lines, that will um, show more or less, that will give you more or less an idea of the position uh, uh, of the new widget. Uh, we have some new features as well, in a way, some um, useful things. Like, um, it's possible to create the existing, uh, to create a template from the existing form. So uh, the other things you have to do is to save the form as a template. So this is useful because sometimes uh, you have a, a dialog and you, have, you use this dialog as a base for uh, other dialogs in your application. Well, a simple example is uh, uh, the Q dialog with two push button, uh, the OK and the cancel button, and, and, and the signal flop connection, for instance, OK with accept and cancel with reject. Well, um, this is template, and you probably you don't want to recreate these two widgets, the layout, every time you have to create a new form. So you, you can design your form, uh, perform your connection, and then save this form as template and reuse it the next time. Uh, the other, the other, uh, another nice feature is, uh, well, as I said before, uh, you can drag widget from the widget box to the form. And that's okay, uh, we know, we, we will create a new instance of this widget. But you can do uh, the other way around. So you can drag a widget from uh, your form into the widget box. It can be even a complex widget, so things inside the layout. Uh, and in this case, we'll create a new component, a new usable component for your application. For instance, if you have a queue layout with uh, two, two buttons inside, you can drag this, uh, uh, this widget and and drop it into the widget box, and then reuse it every time you, you need uh, this component. Um, uh, another nice feature is what we call a promote to custom widget. It's a way to fake uh, a, a widget. Uh, in KDE, for instance, we have a lot of um, widgets that they extend the Q widget, like a K push button that extends Q push button, or K list view that extends Q list view, and so on and so on. In designer, they the same. They look the same. They have the same properties, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, you don't want to write a custom widget for, uh, no, for these plugins. I mean, writing a custom widget means writing C++ code. So sometimes you don't want to do that. Sometimes you just want to say, you know, this widget will be a K push button, and you no, know, the signals are and slots, they're the same of the Q push button, and it will look like the Q push button, so please, you no. Know, generate the code for uh, K push button instead of Q push button. So, so, so the idea is that you can promote an existing widget uh, using this, uh, this functionality. It's available only in the context menu. Actually, I, I'm going to show, show a little demo. So this is a uh, uh, designer uh, with, with, the, with the SDI mode, or anyway, this 
top level mode. And this is um, the new form dialog where you can have uh, okay the standard widgets and the standard forms and uh, your custom forms. Um, as you can see, we draw in real time a preview of the form. Um, so if we start with uh, a new dialog, and let's say that you want, as I said before, you want to drop a push button here, you can promote it with promote to custom widget to a K push button. So it looks like a, a Q push button, but actually it's K push button. So you can save it, you can even drop it here and reuse it every time you need it. Um, so this is very useful, especially when you have uh, widgets that they have a similar API to things we have in queue, like uh, container widgets, like a uh, widget with pages. You can probably fake a tab widget or a stacked widget and say, hey, this is not a stacked widget, but this is uh, my container widget. So you don't have to write a plugin and you have uh, containers for free. Uh, as I said before, uh, you can um, clone existing widget with control drag. So you click on this guy and then you move it and you create an exactly uh, a copy or uh, you, you, you can do it for more than one. Um, this is very useful. We also introduce an in-place editing. So if you if you press F2 on a, on a widget, if the widget supports the in-place editing mode, then you will edit the properties in uh, in place. So like in this case, and you see that if we clone it now, we get all the properties, so the new text. It works for fonts and other things. So it's very useful and, and more powerful than uh, the old toolbox. Um, then, as I said before, uh, we have um, uh, the ability to drop widget inside the layout. And you see, we have this, um, these blue lines that we show the position of the new widget. We also improve things like uh, the property editor. In Qt4, now we have a lot of properties for things like um, uh, list widgets. Um, no, these, these are very complex widget actually. They, they inherit from, um, um, I mean, for example, the QList widget inherits from the QList view, then the abstract view, and then uh, so on and so on. Uh, so we have a lot of properties, and it's very difficult to find something here. So we introduce uh, essentially these categories, and essentially you have the name of the class that introduced the property in the property editor. This is useful. Um, then we have, um, uh, we have this new concept of um, tools. So uh, now, you know, I'm adding the form and I'm in uh, the widget editing mode. So I'm using uh, the widget editor tool. Uh, we provide other tools like uh, the signal slot connection. Uh, so in, in, in this mode, uh, you can um, perform signal slot connection in uh, real time. So we do this, for instance. And uh, we have other modes, of course, like uh, the tab order and uh, the body tool. Uh, so now, th this is a nice mode because you can see the logic of your application. Of course, this, this mode is strange, actually. If you, have a, if you have a lot of widgets, it can be really confusing because uh, you have a, a lot of lines and a lot of text. So it's very confusing. But in Q4 uh, and in Designer 4, you can't create custom slots. So actually, the connection that you can draw in Designer they not not that many because uh, you you can't create a new connection and what you want to do is probably to to select to connect two or three widgets into the form and, and there is actually a nice workaround for it I'm, I'm going to to show you after but uh, this is nice because you can see the logic of your application and so so for instance here we say that every time we click on this uh, push button we animate uh, the click on this other push button so okay if we preview this form and we click on this push button we have the preview for the connection as well. Uh, so this is nice for testing your application. It's probably a bit dangerous because in the connection you can do whatever you want. But uh, if you know what you're doing, it's nice to test the connection in the preview mode. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the new designer is just a good builder. You can't edit code here. And there is no main window, uh, uh, the concept of you know, menus and toolbars and stuff like that. But we reintroduced all this concept in 4.1. So you, if you download the snapshot or you, you wait for the bees, you will have all these features. Okay, let's continue. So this was the, the first part of the, the presentation. 
uh, I have another two parts. Uh, the second part is about tools, uh, USC and RCC. USC is uh, our user interface compiler. Uh, essentially, every time you design a new form in Designer, we generate this XML file uh, with the extension UI, and you can use USC to generate code. Uh, USC in 4 is completely different from the old USC. So when you, port, when you will port your application, you have to essentially to change, probably you have to change a lot of code if you want to port your application to USC, to the new one. We provide in Qt4 uh, uh, a new tool that is called USC3 that is compatible with the old USC. So if you, if you prefer you know, to use the old approach, then you can, you, can continue, you can continue to use it. So USC, what's different? Uh, so um, before, in, uh, in Qt3, USC generates something like four files, five files probably. I mean, you have the UI file, then you have this optional UI.h file, that contains uh, extra code, signals and slot, SOC slot code. Uh, then you have uh, the header file and the C++ file generated by USC. And then you have uh, the H file, the header file and the C++ file that contains the actual implementation of uh, you know, your code. Uh, so, so in total, for each form, you have something like six files. That it's a lot. It's a lot of files. So if you want to search for something, if you're looking for uh, the logic of something, you, you, you have to look to six different files, essentially. So we decided to change it. In, uh, in, U in the new USC, we generate uh, a new a class that is a normal class. We don't uh, extend QObject. We don't inherit from QObject. If this class is inside the namespace UI. So if you use an IDE, you have all these classes inside uh, the namespace UI in your class browser. Um, it's very neat. Um, this, this file generated by, uh, by USC contains both the headers, the, sorry, the declaration and the implementation. So essentially we generate only one file. Uh, this file contains, I mean, it contains uh, uh, references for um, uh, the elements of your form, so widgets, layout, actions, and the things you use in your form. And it also contains two functions. One is setup UI that will initialize this form, essentially. And the other one is a retranslate UI that can be used when you perform, uh, I don't know, if, your, if your application can be translated into another, uh, into another language, you, you, you may want to call this retranslate UI. So how do you use it? Well, you have a lot of different way, there's a lot of different way to use it. Um, one is uh, it's, uh, this one with subclassing. Uh, so, so you have, um, you have a, a myWidget.ui that contains your uh, widget, your form. And so what we do is to create a new class called myWidget. We extend QObject. Uh, so we call, of course, we, we use the Q underscore object macro. And then as a member variable, we have this UI colon colon myWidget UI. This actually, it's the code. It's, it's, uh, this UI colon colon myWidget is generated by USC. It's the only thing generated by USC. So in your constructor, you can say something like uh, USC dot setup UI, so create the user interface, uh, this. This is essentially the top level widget. So, um, so uh, your form will be created on top of my widget in this case. Uh, another way to use it is uh, you, have, you already have an existing dialog. So you have a Q dialog DLG. So, so what, what, what you can do is to create a variable UI colon colon widget, my widget UI, and then initialize your, um, your form on top of this existing dialog. So this is neat because uh, you can have more than one um, UI file and create this UI file into an existing widget. Uh, for instance, this can be a tab widget or an, a complex container, and you can create different pages and initialize different pages on existing containers, uh, on different pages of the container. In this case, uh, this case is interesting because uh, sometimes you have uh, very uh, simple forms, like uh, the Q input dialog, where you have essentially this dialog with the label and the line edit. And, and essentially, you're interested only in the text of this line edit. So you don't want to subclass this class and you know, add your code, perform the connection. You don't want that, because you're interested only in uh, the code or in the text of the line editor. So in this case, if my widget is one of these input dialog, 
uh, you, you can you can access to the so to the text with uh, the last line UI line with line edit that is the name of the instance text that's the method that you want. Um, well, uh, of course, this new approach introduces problems. It's completely different from the old one. So if you use the old one, you you, you probably you have problem porting your application. And one problem is form to form connection. So if you have form one, and from form one you use something from form two, then you can have a problem with the dependency problem. And this is because uh, the new USE generates only one file, and we don't have a forward declaration. So um, uh, essentially, you have the the class declaration and the class implementation for form one. And then you have the class declaration and the class implementation for form two. Now, if form one will include form two, and form two will include form one, and you don't have forward declaration, you don't have other file and C++ file, but you have everything in one single file, well, then you can't, because, uh, uh, because they have to be both defined. And it's not sufficient you know, to, to declare them. But you can work around it. And I think that this is a, it's not really a workaround, but it's a, a, clean, uh, a clear solution. So in this case, you have a, a third entity, uh, I call it world in this case, where you include all your uh, files, uh, and then you can set up the connection between files. And you can specify your logic into a third component. So as I said before, the problem is the new file generation model, because we generate only one file, and this file contains everything. Uh, it's, very, it's very easy, simple, but introduces this problem, this dependency problem. Uh, slots and UI.h file. Uh, in in Qt Designer 3, it was possible to create new slots and it was possible to, to um, edit the code of these new slots inside the designer. Well, we removed this feature. Um, well, we removed we, You can't create new slots because in, in Qt 4, you don't need it. You really don't need it to create new slots. Because uh, in, in the meta object, that is this class in Qt, this core class in Qt, in, in Qt we, we have these new methods called connect slots by name widget. Um, if you call this, um, this uh, method on your form, uh, you have essentially Qt will uh, create for you all the slots you need. And of course, we use special, a special naming convention. Uh, this is this on underscore object name underscore signal. So what that means? If you have a form and your form has a, a push button uh, with name OK uh, button, and you want to do something when you click on this button, well, in Qt3, uh, you, you essentially you create a new slot in designer, and then you write the code, the logic of what you want. In Qt4, you don't have to do it. You just have to to write the code in this slot that is called on underscore OK button underscore click. If you have arguments, arguments. So you really don't need to create slots because you have all these slots available for you, essentially. Uh, and editing, editing the code, well, we remove this functionality because it's OK if you use designer for, uh, you know, as a standalone tool and for, you know, for uh, to develop essentially your application, but if you if you have a group where people uh, you know they using designer and other people they use Visual Studio and other people they use other IDEs, then it's very difficult to uh, to keep track of this UI.h file because this UI.h file they are generated by designer and half uh, essentially by the user, so it's very it's it's it was a hack for uh, Qt3, um, and now we remove it. Uh, so that was the USC. Uh, the other tool we introduced that is very interesting is the resource compiler. Uh, of course, the resource compiler is using the resource engine. So together, essentially, the replacement for uh, USC-embed or uh, uh, Q-embed of Qt3. It's a really nice tool, and it's um, very well designed, and it's integrated with Q5. So if you, essentially, the idea is that you can specify a list of files and compile this file into code, C code, in, and essentially you know, link this file into your application. Then if you want to access to this file, well, the only things you have to do is uh, to specify colon as a prefix of the name. 
so, 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 so you say, oh, I have a directory called a troll tech. I have a directory called designer. Inside there is this file called icon.png. Well, it's a resource because it starts with colon. So don't look at the file system, but look inside the application, the actual code in the application. Uh, designer integrates with um, the resource engine and the resource compiler. So we provide this editor, this resource editor, where you can add, remove, and edit resources. Um, we don't have a project in Designer 4. So what you have to do is, uh, if you have three different forms, even if for the same project, you have to specify essentially the resource file used by each form. Uh, so, so essentially you have to associate your resource file to a form. Only the first time, then we save it in the UI file. Uh, this resource file contains the prefix. In the case, in the example before, the prefix is this, was this uh, troll tech, uh, uh, troll stack designer, um, and then a set of files uh, like icon.png. Uh, well, all these resources. So, if you have a bunch of icons, a PNG file or uh, everything that is supported by Qt, then they are available in the property editor. So, if you have, a, for instance, a, a push button and you want to change the icon for this push button, well, you can use a resource file with this icon. And then with the property editor, you can associate this icon to, to the push button. So that was uh, the second part of the talk. Um, now I'm going to talk about um, Designer 4. And actually, the SDK we introduced with Designer 4. Um, I like to think that it's the most important feature of Designer 4. And, and essentially, it allows the user to write new tools, new components, and new, new custom widgets. So uh, you can extend designer not only with new custom widgets for uh, the widget we don't support, but with new tools. Uh, uh, everything in designer is a, is a plugin, even if it's compiled inside designer, but it's a plugin. So the connection editor, or the um, resource editor, or the form window, everything is a plugin. And uh, this SDK, essentially describe the core plugin we want in designer, like the property editor or the widget box or the object inspector that is the browser, the object browser, and, and other things like the form editor and form windows and so on and so on. And it also uh, provides a set of functionality to extend the designer. Uh, an, an example is uh, the form builder uh, and the extension framework. Uh, the form builder is uh, the replacement for uh, uh, the widget factory, if you know USC3, um, uh, Designer 3 and USC3. So um, essentially, using this class, the form builder, you can load at runtime uh, a UI file, on a form, and then you can use it. So in this example, we have a form.ui that is designed with designer, and, and then we load it and we create a widget, and then we use it. Uh, this class is available in, uh, in Designer. That means if you want to use this class, then you have to link with the Designer, with the shared library Designer. And that's good if you want to extend Designer, but probably it's not that good if you want to provide this uh, functionality in your, in your application, because uh, you may want to link with Designer. I mean, Designer is anyway a huge application, and you maybe want to, you know, to shape, uh, I don't know, a media player. Uh, so you don't want to link with the designer in this case. So in Qt 4.1, we introduced a new library. And this new library is called QForm, libq4. And uh, this library contains something like the form builder. Uh, it's called loader. And uh, in future, we'll, we will extend this library with a set of tools you know, that it will uh, work on uh, UI files, like you know, creating UI file or uh, uh, saving UI file, uh, changing UI file, and stuff like that. So uh, everything in 4.0 was not documented, but in 4.1, we have a documentation for everything. And uh, all these classes and th this new library is documented. So you may want to take a look at it. Uh, the, other, the other component that is interesting for other application, like your application, is uh, the extension framework. Uh, this is uh, an implementation of the adapter pattern by Gamma and friends. And, and essentially, it allows you to extend uh, an object at runtime. 
um, uh, extending an object at runtime. Uh, in C++, you can extend a class using a inheritance. So, so if you have a, a base class A, uh, you can create B that extends R with A with new functionality. Well, um, this is okay, but in design we have a problem. Uh, we have something like uh, 20 or 30 widgets, and we don't want to fake the old widgets for, uh, for designer. Uh, I mean, designer needs to know a lot of things about the widgets, and it needs to fake the widget. So, for instance, for, uh, when you have a push button and you select the push button, we don't want to click the push button. So, a, a way to do it is uh, extending push button, say something like Q designer push button, um, and we're implementing things like a mouse press event or a event filter and stuff like that. Uh, another way is to extend the widget at runtime. So you, have, you already have a Q push button, an existing instance of Q push button, and then you want to add to this existing widget some functionality. Uh, uh, another interesting thing is uh, uh, making compatible to incompatible APIs, like um, for <laughs> widgets with pages tab widget and toolbox. They look the same, but right? they, they look different, but um, uh, you know, the API is similar. Uh, the only difference is that if you want to add a new page in the tab widget, you have to call add tab. If you want to add a new page in the toolbox, you have to call add item. But it's the same. They widget with page, and USC will generate something that is very similar. Um, and you can probably fake I, I, at least for, for designer, you can probably fake uh, these two widgets you know, with the same code. So um, what's the idea uh, behind the framework? Well, the idea is very simple. Um, and so, so I'll show you a small example. Uh, we want to extend QTab widget with uh, a new function, add page. And this add page for, we'll, call, uh, as an, we'll call add tab for the tab widget. We, we will probably have a, another implementation for the toolbox. So the first things you have to do is to introduce this new extension. So you create a, your class. You call it container extension. It's an abstract class um, as one method, as few. And it's called add page. Then you, 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 you use this macro, this QDeclare extension framework wants two arguments. The first one is the name of the class, and the second one is uh, a string. Uh, it must be unique. In this case, we say, OK, container-extension. Uh, then you have to, to implement this extension for your widget. So we tab widget. So we say that in the, in the variable tw, in this variable, we have this existing widget, so this existing qtab widget. So the actual method would be just to call add tab to this existing uh, instance. But the things you have to do is to extend Q object and, and to implement this interface. To implement the interface, you have to extend the interface and call this Q interfaces macro. That's all you have to do. Uh, and then you, you can extend your widget at runtime. Uh, of course, uh, you need a way to create this extension at runtime. And you do it with uh, what we call extension factory. Um, so, so the idea is um, you have this method, create extension, that takes the existing instance, so the object that you want to fake, essentially, or that you want to extend. Then uh, it takes an identifier, let's say, you know, uh, the interface, actually, that you want to provide for this method, sorry, for, for this object, and then the parent that will own the, the extension. So in this case, we say, OK, uh, uh, we know how to create container extension. So we check if the, the interface you want is a container extension, OK, then I know what to do. Um, actually, I know what to do only if uh, the widget has type tab widget. Uh, in this case, we don't know how to create, how to extend the toolbox. We know only how to extend the tab widget. So if, it's, if the, the current object 
is a tab widget, and the interface is a container, then we return it. So we figured. Um, so how do you use it? Why, why these things is useful? Because then you can write things like that. Um, you have a widget that you want to fake, and then you, you say, okay, let's see if this widget supports the extension, uh, container extension. Uh, you see that this index is like uh, a cast, like a dynamic cast or a queue object cast. So essentially you say, you, you ask if widget for the manager, uh, manager uh, support this interface. If this interface is supported, then you can use it. You just call uh, add page. Uh, this Qt extension, this function has a lot of magic inside. So if the extension is not available, it will create this extension. If uh, the extension is created, then it will cache this extension and reuse this extension every time you, you, you ask for it. And if you delete the widget, uh, the manager will delete this extension. So it, it looks like if uh, we, we have uh, this fake tab widget with the extra meto method add tab, add page, uh, but without, um, without extending the class. Only we did it at runtime. So, why this extension framework? Well, because as I said before, uh, in designer, uh, uh, it's very extensible, and you can extend everything in designer. So we define a lot of um, uh, extension, standard extension, uh, that you can implement in your custom widget or your custom plugin. Uh, so we have things like uh, test menu extension that uh, you, you can um, implement if you want uh, to extend the pop-up menu, or things like uh, the container extension that uh, you want to extend, you want to use it if you want to create a widget with pages like the tab widget or uh, the toolbox. Um, then we have the property sheet extension that um, it's, a, it's an extension used by the property editor. So if you want to add a new property to a widget, uh, you, you can do it, you know, creating this um, property sheet extension and add these new properties. Um, and then we have the key designer membership um, extension that contains things like the signals and slots for, um, for each widget we support in designer. So essentially we have, uh, we have more. We have an extension for, um, uh, for most of designer. So if you want, you can replace an existing functionality of designer by replacing the extension, or you can uh, extend designer with, um, with a new extension. Everything in designer is using this, this framework. Um, this framework was very useful uh, in embedding designer. And we have a, uh, a lot of examples. And, and the idea is that we, we provide two different libraries. The first one is QDesigner, Qt Designer. And this library contains uh, essentially the core functionality of designer. And it's, it's essentially the designer SDK, the things that we, I, I showed you before. And then we have an, an extra library that is this uh, Qt designer component that contains the default implementation for uh, the property editor, the widget box, and all the components we have in designer. Uh, if, you, if you want to extend designer, uh, you need to use the first library, libqt designer. But if you want to embed the designer into your application, so you want to write an IDE, or you want to provide to the user uh, a way to uh, change your form, then you, you have to use the second library. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, in the second library, you have things like the property editor and the form widget. And the idea is that you include these um, QDesigner components, the other file that contains this library. Uh, and then you create a form editor that is essentially the core designer, the core functionality of designer. And then you can create the, sing the, sing the single components with uh, things like um, create property editor. Uh, and you have things like create widget box and stuff like that. So if you want to use, for instance, the property editor into your application, but you don't want to use the form editor or uh, other stuff in your application, you can simply call uh, include this library and call create property editor, and then you can use it. Uh, then we say, in, in this case, we say that the default, the default property editor is, uh, is the one that we created. 
So uh, as you see, you know, embedding designer into, into your application is very easy because uh, okay, you have uh, the property editor, you have the widget box, you have the object inspector and other components. Well, you, you, you create these components with uh, create property editor and create widget box and create all the other, essentially. Uh, and then the other thing you have to do is to say that the parent widget of this component will be Visual Studio or uh, will be KDevelop or will be your application. So, um, okay, now you created all your components, so you have everything you need, but um, you may want to add some logic. For instance, uh, okay, you say, oh, I don't like the standalone designer by Trolltech. I want the code editor. So, well, what you can do is to create your own shell. So, so you, you, you use QDesigner components to create all the designer components, and then you can uh, embed your editor, and you can use the designer SDK to write your functionality. Uh, for instance, uh, if you uh, you can use the membership extension to ask for all the methods you know, supported by a widget and do something in the code editor and stuff like that. Um, but the simplest example is the standalone designer. The standalone designer, if you want, if you want to look at the, an implementation of a real example of how to embed designer, you want to look at the standalone designer. It's very simple, it's a lightweight GUI builder. Essentially, the only things you can do is to design forms. You don't have a project, you don't have an editor, so it's very simple. You can load UI files, and you can edit these UI files. There is no way to edit code, um, but it's very extensible, because it's using this extension framework, we showed before, so you can extend everything inside, inside Designer. It looks like this, uh, it's what we, we used before. Uh, when you embed a designer into IDEs, well, you can use the functionality from your IDE. So um, we don't have a project in designer, but Visual Studio has a project manager for us. So what we want to do is, uh, okay, to integrate our tools like Mock, USC, and the Resource Compiler, and integrate the designer, the form editor designer, into Visual Studio. And, and an example is that uh, we want to to really integrate the designer into, into Visual Studio. So we don't want to open another window, and we don't want to create another property editor, because uh, Visual Studio already has, I mean, there is a property editor in Visual Studio, and it will look strange if we embed another property editor. In Visual Studio, we will have two different property editors, and it will just look confusing. So you want to use the existing property editor. Um, with the designer framework, it's possible. The only things you have to do is to implement this interface for property editor, uh, using the Visual Studio Property Editor, um, and that's all. So, uh, designer integrated in Visual Studio looks like this. So, you see, we have our own widget box, we have the Visual Studio Property Editor, we have uh, the form editor integrated. Uh, in the context menu, we have extra information, um, like this connect signal. So, if you select this connect signal, then uh, the designer integration will ask to the membership for all the, all the property, sorry, for all the slots supported by these widgets. In this case, it was the push button. So we open this dialog, where you can choose the, the slots you want, and then we jump to the code editor, to the Visual Studio code editor, and, and you see we, we created this slot with this on underscore prefix, the things we saw before. We saw before. And, and then you have the code completion of Visual Studio, and you have Everything, the class browser of Visual Studio, everything integrated. Uh, it's not only Visual Studio. A uh, designer was developed to be embedded into existing IDE and maybe in future for the Trolltech IDE if we, if we had time to do it. So it must be very, very generic. Um, we, the KDE community is working on uh, an integration of Qt KDE into Eclipse. Eclipse is a very interesting tool, but it's a KDE project. Internally, in designer, in, in, in Trolltech, we're interested, of course, in Eclipse. And internally, we have a, uh, an implementation, an integration of designer. Uh, we're, not, we're not sure we're going to make a product in future, so we just use it to test designer and test how extensible and embeddable designer is. So yeah, this is a, this is an example 
um, Linux, and um, I think this is the GTK user interface. Um, this is the Zanner embedded with our own property editor. In this case, we don't use the, the in this example, we don't use the uh, Eclipse property editor. Uh, but as you can see, it looks integrated. So you, you can really use the Zanner inside your IDE, and it will look like part of your IDE. In the CAD community, we had this um, uh, open source IDE. It's called KDevelop. And we're currently working on uh, the 4.0 release. And it's scheduled in uh, six months, probably more than six months. And it will feature um, an integration with the designer, of course, and, and completely new uh, C++ support. So we will be able to have code refactoring like uh, like like Eclipse for Java, so you, you'll be able to rename function or uh, extract code from existing um, function and, and things like that. So if you're interested, uh, we're going to port KDevelop on Windows and OS 10. Uh, but this is the KD community, it's not Trolltech anyway. So if you're interested uh, into an IDE, a multi-platform IDE, uh, you will have one in six months probably, and that will be very advanced. I don't have a screenshot yet because we're working on it. <laughs> so the conclusion. Well, the, the idea of Designer 4 was to drop this monolithic stuff. We don't want a tool, this huge tool, with a project, uh, with uh, a code editor, and with all this functionality because uh, it wasn't an IDE, it wasn't a good builder, it was something in the middle, and integrating it into an existing IDE was almost impossible because an existing IDE provides this feature, so you have duplication. Uh, we focused on uh, integrating to uh, other IDEs, and we we try to improve the user interface with this drag and drop, as I, as I showed you before, and we provide this powerful SDK to extend it with new functionality. Most of the user, most of our customers, they extend the designer with custom widget, and that's all. They don't extend it with uh, new functionality, but only custom widgets. But now, now it's possible to extend it with new functionality. Um, yeah, that was it. Questions? <laughs> yeah, a question? You have time? Uh, there is one there. Uh, you probably need a microphone. Yeah. Hello, I'm Salim Gomri uh, from uh, Alten Society, and uh, I want to know uh, if uh, there is an improvement uh, concerning the uh, QMIN window in the new uh, version of uh, Qt Designer. Mm. Okay, um, okay. As, as we said before, in 4.0 we dropped the main window. Uh, we say, oh, that's not important. We don't use it. So wait. <laughs> um, in, in then, then a lot of customers they really wanted, so we re-added. Um, it looks like the old one. It's probably a bit nicer because uh, now we have a, a new window. So the action editor in the old one was a bit annoying. So now it's it's a bit nicer. But uh, we don't really have improvement. It, it looks like the same, and that's the same functionality essentially, at least for now. But uh, we're going to extend it with, uh, of course, with new functionality after. The, the, the only, well, the only real improvement is uh, the doc widget support. Now in Designer 4.1, you can create new QDoc widget and, and design these doc widgets inside Designer. This was not possible before, and this is part of the main window. But editing menus and edit, editing toolbars is, is the same, essentially. You, you know, editing the menus is editing the menus, so you can't really do much. Yeah. Uh, other question? Yeah. Oh, uh, question. Um, one question, uh, does the 
connect uh, slots by name mechanism work if you um, use a layout dynami dynamically uh, by using the Q-Form Builder? Um, no, should work. <laughs> so it's a bug, probably. I mean, I, the, the I, I don't know. I'm oh, just no. asking. Oh, okay. So yeah, it works. <laughs> no, I, I'm just asking, asking out of interest. It works, but it's, it uh, work. it's um, uh, okay. It works, uh, but it's uh, probably dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> but it's dangerous. You may don't want to do that because. Um, uh, uh, you can even use, I mean, this is not um, a UIC or a QDesigner functionality. This is something we, we provide in, um, in Qt, in general. So if you have your class, your class has a method called on underscore an object, like a timer, underscore timeout, do something. Well, uh, uh, you can use this meta object, um, connect lots by name. So it's not something in, uh, in, uh, in designer, actually, but it's something in, um, in Qt. In the form builder, we don't call this connect slots by name as default because it's dangerous. So what you want to do is to create your class, then load it with uh, this form builder. If the parent of this class has uh, no, these slots, essentially, if, uh, if the parent widget has this on underscore uh, something, then you can call this, uh, this connect slots by name. But you have to do it because uh, we don't want to do it in the form builder because it's dangerous mm -hmm. in okay. general. Thank you. Yeah, sure. designer in Q3 um, uh, had an MDI interface, and now we can switch to um, a single floating window interface. Is this also possible for my applications? You mean this functionality? Yes. Well, um, uh, this is very interesting, but it's not that difficult to implement, actually. Uh, the, in Q4, we have this uh, new function uh, that is nothing, uh, no, nothing so strange. It's set parent. So essentially, if you have a widget, you can call set parent on this widget to another widget, and you reparent it. So when we switch mode, essentially, we we iterate for all this widget, and then we call set parent for the workspace, and then we also call add window for the workspace. And when you switch back, then we we reset this parent, and we we move the widget. Who is the parent of the floating windows? Uh, it's the desktop. They, they, they so there is no, no connection, no container uh, no, over them? No, the top level. Okay. The top level widget. Um, so, it's, so you see, there is, it's very simple. In Qt4, it's very simple to implement something like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're going to research in this direction because uh, um, in KDE, we have what we call KMDI that provides, well, something like that. It's probably more powerful, but provides something like that. Um, a lot of customers, they want this functionality into their application. And so we're going, probably, we're going to, to do something, probably a, a solution or a, a project for, uh, for this mode, essentially. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Well, my name is Valentin Illich. You didn't tell us something about Xcode. Excellent. That means yeah. developing under <laughs> Mac OS. <laughs> I, I actually, that's interesting because uh, the, type, the, the original title of, of, of the presentation was um, uh, Qt, Visual Studio, Kdevelop, and Xcode. <laughs> then I changed it to Eclipse. Um, uh, Xcode is interesting, actually, SD, but uh, you can't really extend it. There is no documentation of it. And even the interface builder into Xcode is an external application. So the only things you have actually is the, the integration with uh, the UI file, with uh, the explorer essentially, with the file manager. So the only things you can do is uh, to open uh, a UI file from Xcode. So that's for designer. Uh, other things are the UIC and the results compiler and mock. They're not integrated at the moment with Xcode, uh, but we are going to do it. Um, so, so probably in 4.2 or uh, at some point in the 4.1 release, we will have a better Xcode support for uh, our tools like UIC and mock and stuff like that. But for the, for, uh, the designer integration, we don't know yet. We're investigating it, but uh, I think that it's very difficult that we will be able to do something.
Okay. Thank you, uh, Roberto. Uh -huh. Thank you.